So welcome back to my channel and happy new year to you. Today we're doing another part of the series Best in Beauty for 2022. I have posted a few videos already. I did the complexion products and then bronzers, blush, and highlight, which was my favorite video. That was the second one that was posted. I will have links in the cards in the top section of the video for you to click on to watch them. And I will also link them in the description box so that you can watch the first parts. But Today's video is all about the eyes. I have quite a few eye products and I'm going to see if I can include the lip category towards the end of the video um, if I have time. If not, I'll have to do that in a separate one. So we're going to start with eyeshadows and I have quite a few and I think I'm going to start with the ones that I felt like I used the absolute most. The ones that really made the biggest difference for me in my routine and I started using cream shadows pretty heavily over the summer. I felt like it was something that was easy to do, a one and done kind of thing that I could use to create a look without having multiple steps. And I really enjoyed using these few that I'm going to show you today. So the first one is the Bobbi Brown one. I just picked one. I have a couple in this range, but this is the shade called Golden Bronze and it's a beautiful bronze color and it has a bit of shimmer and it has a bit of sparkle as well to it. So I feel like it does make the eyes look so pretty and adds a little bit of smokiness without being super difficult to wear and work with. The formula is great and again it's that sort of cream style but in a sort of pen form where you can just kind of scribble it on and then blend it with your fingers or a brush. I have a few other ones in my hand. I have one from It Cosmetics. The Superhero ones are really great. These are the Superhero No Tug Shadow Sticks. This one specifically is my favorite one out of the ones that I've tried and it's called Super Slate. Everything is going to be listed for you in the description box, by the way. And then the Color Chameleons by Charlotte Tilbury. This one in Amber Haze is the only one that I have in this range and I feel like it's the perfect color to do for eyeshadow, for liner, smudging on the lower lash line. And I absolutely love cream shadows because it's easy. And as a mom of four, I feel like having ease of use is super important for me versus having it a bunch of different steps or palettes that have a bunch of things in it. The more simplistic the routine is for me, the better. So these are really great. I also like the cream shadows from Charlotte Tilbury. I have a few. I just pulled one in my collection to show you what the packaging looks like. It's a frosted glass with the CT logo on the top. This one here is the Pillow Talk shade, which I have gotten a lot of use out of, and it's a beautiful formula. Very creamy, easy to work with, blends well very pigmented. It doesn't skip, drag, it doesn't crease, it doesn't migrate up into the crease after hours of wearing, it doesn't fade. I feel like the cream shadow formula from Charlotte is really great and I'll show you some powder eyeshadows from this brand that I love because I feel like the formula is one of my top favorites for eyeshadows. So my smaller palettes I'm going to show you. The first two are also from Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of my favorite high-end brands. The Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette and the Charlotte Darling palette. I will open them up to show you the inside. The Charlotte Darling is the one with the more warm tones. And as you can see, it's six eyeshadows, very easy to work with and create different looks. It's not super fussy. There isn't a lot of um, colors and, and finishes and whatnot that you have to kind of figure out how to use. It's really simple. You have three shimmers or metallic kind of finishes and then three mattes. And I feel like the mattes are the really basic staple colors that you need. And on the back, it does give you kind of an outline, one, two, and three, of how it's sort of designed to be used. But with any eyeshadow palette, you can really just use these as you wish. And I love these warm tones. But I also really like this one here, also from Charlotte, the Easy Eye Palette. This one has six very basic staple colors that I feel like is great to have when you're using uh, single shadows or a cream shadow, but you need some depth and something to kind of ground the color in the crease for definition and for liner. What makes this super special is not only the pigmentation, but the quality of it. The formula itself is very creamy. These feel like a cream, but perform and wear like a powder. Very different and honestly a very unique formula to my collection. I have nothing like this and I honestly have never tried anything that has this feel texture wise in my collection or in the palettes that I've used over the years. Like there is a creaminess and a softness, a smoothness to these formulas. And that's why it makes it super special. And you have some shades that can kind of be more on the cool side. Then you have some that offer more warm tones like this tan and this sort of terracotta color. And then you have a really rich 
pigmented black that you can use for a smoky eye, for eyeliner, which is how I use this black shade. It's mostly for eyeliner and smudging it on the lower lash line or smudging out um, like a pencil liner or a liquid liner. I don't typically use a lot of black eyeshadow on the crease just because I feel like that's a little dark, but it is rich and pigmented and you have that there, so it offers some versatility. These small palettes are great. I do have quite a few of for quads and I love them. Like I said, it's one of my favorite high-end brands, so any of these quads are really great. Very pigmented and easy to use. They Some of them have like limited edition um, design on the outside, but the standard look is going to be like this really deep crimson with gold and it's four colors pretty straightforward very easy to use i'm just going to go ahead and include these in this portion because they're singles i don't have a lot of single eyeshadows i'm more of a palette girl small quads the six pans larger palettes i like it because i like to have options and just kind of choose and wear something different every day but these little minis from charlotte came out very recently a few months back and these are the hypnotizing pop shots and I shared these with you on Instagram so if you follow me there you probably saw this already but I shared with you the swatches and the colors I have rose gold and then this one that's called smoky quartz they're absolutely beautiful they give this beautiful kind of gleam and glow to your lids and it just adds a little sparkle so if you like that sparkly look the look of like a glitter eyeshadow but you don't want the big chunky glitters you don't want to see flecks of anything on your lids this is where I think you would enjoy the sort of glittery aspect. Pretty sparkle that these give. It's a very sophisticated sparkle. That's the word that I was looking for earlier and I couldn't think of it. It's very sophisticated, very glowy, beautiful. If you've seen any of the Charlotte Tilbury pictures on Instagram, videos, even on the website ads for her brand, you see it's a very ethereal kind of glow with all of her products and that's pretty consistent across the board with her brand and these give you that beautiful finish on the eyes and I love using this one specifically this is rose gold and the packaging like look at this packaging with the colored rhinestones it's just it's a 10 out of 10 all the way around all right so for more palettes I'm gonna do this one that is more on the smaller side and I did get this towards the end of the year when these actually launched and I want to say it was like mid-November ish but it's the Lisa Eldridge palette I absolutely love this one this is the only one that I have and this is the Vega one and I feel like it is just absolutely beautiful I did a video solely dedicated on this palette and I will also link that for you in case you're interested in it but I was curious about her eyeshadows she came out with eyeshadows last year and I cannot tell you how many times I've used this since I got this palette in the mail I feel like the colors are just absolutely perfect you have some really great staple colors you have some shades that are deeper to add some depth and smokiness you can use them for liner you can also use these two shades here which are pretty pigmented and this one here specifically which is called moon swirl is a metallic finish it feels like butter it's like this creamy very very different formula and these mattes blend like a dream they honestly blend themselves so when you hear someone say these eyeshadows blend themselves it's because when you apply them with a crease brush or a pencil brush it's like you don't really have to work it's like you put the product or in the crease or the lower lash line and it just it's done and it doesn't take a lot of work it's one of those palettes where if I don't know what else to do for eyeshadow for the day if I don't have a cream shadow that I want to use another palette if I pick this up I know I'm gonna love every single look that I create with it whether it's soft or smoky it's just easy and I don't really have to think about it it's just it's simple and it's easy and I love the formula they're creamy. There's different formulations in each of these palettes. You have seamless mattes, you have velvet finish, you have the luminous finish, the metallics. So she offers a variety of different finishes in these palettes, which is why I feel like they are worth the price point because you can definitely tell that it's a very high-end formula and you can also tell that a makeup artist is behind the product because this is just spectacular, it's stellar, I love it. So next for larger palettes, I'm gonna start with the Persona Identity Palette. This is the palette that I did a video on, um, I wanna say it was towards the end of the summer, or mid to late summer, and this was one of the palettes that I wanted to try and kind of experiment with this brand. I saw this brand on Instagram, I saw that their products are sold through Ulta, and I decided to try one of their palettes. And I did, since then, purchase some of their other products, like their blush sticks, which are really great, I have their eyeliner and I really have enjoyed so far everything I've tried so this identity palette it is 
probably the palette that I have in my collection that has everything that I could ever need for a look. There's not one color in this palette that I would never use. I have purchased palettes over the years. I've been doing makeup for a very long time and there's palettes where it has colors that I reach for and love and then there's a couple sprinkled in that may be something for fun. Something just different to do something different and creative in a tutorial but not something that I use every single day. And then I started thinking why am I buying palettes that have colors that I don't even wear. This is one that has every single color. There's not one specific shade in this palette that I would never use. It's an everyday essential palette and that is why I did a video on it because I felt like I was just blown away not only by the quality, the pigmentation, how it blends and wears, but the fact that there is no complaints. <laughs> I have no complaints on this palette. The color story is great. The pigmentation on these metallics is wonderful. The mattes blend very well. In fact, I'm wearing a lot of these colors today. The shade called Seductive is one of my favorites. It's kind of like a taupey, um, kind of like a silvery taupe with a bit of a plum undertone to it. It's really, really nice. I have Charming, which is this matte crease color, and then I have this one called Fearless as liner and smudge on the lower lash line. So again, it's one of those palettes where there is no complaints. The next one is one from NARS, and I got this over the summer. This is the Summer Unrated palette, and you can see fingerprints, and it's dirty, but it's used. And it is a little tricky to open this one specifically, but I will show you the inside. This one, if it's still available you will see that it is a very warm tone. And I love warm tones. So if you like these colors, then you will definitely enjoy these. Um, color story, the way it's laid out, you will enjoy the formula and the look of these colors. I actually was wearing this palette in my previous two videos for the Best in Beauty um, series that I've been doing. And I absolutely love the way these look. Like this dark one, I use it for liner all the time. These crease colors, you have these really pretty pinks and berries so again it's one of those that has to really appeal to you because it is very heavy on the warm tone side but it is incredibly pigmented and NARS makes exceptional products. I rarely have been disappointed from NARS. I feel like it's been a while so this was kind of like a sort of a rediscovery trying to rediscover their eyeshadows because it's been years since I used their eyeshadows and so I decided to go back and circle back to this brand and I started off with this palette and now I want to try more from them because I feel like I was missing out for a very long time um, not trying NARS eyeshadows. I used to have a duo from them years ago and this was probably 12 years ago. It was a duo of very light tones and I actually hit pan on them and I was so proud of that because you know how long it takes to hit pan on an eyeshadow? It takes a very long time. So it was kind of similar to these shades here. Very, very light and kind of shimmery and so I would use those all over the lid and then a super thick gel liner. I was going through a phase of just wearing light eyeshadow, not much in the crease and that was the palette and I don't remember what it was called and I don't even think they make it anymore. But overall I feel like NARS is a great brand for eyeshadow. Alright so now we get to talk about mascaras. I have a few to share with you. The first one is the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes from Charlotte Tilbury. This is a mini size. I actually have a full size in an empties bin for a future empties video. I absolutely love the way this mascara makes my lashes look. For me, I'm looking for something that lengthens, that thickens, that gives me the separation that I'm looking for, a fanned out effect, a mascara that can make my lashes look even longer and make it look like I'm wearing individual false eyelashes. I know it's a lot to ask for, but it does exist. <laughs> so I would say that this one from Charlotte Tilbury checks off all my boxes and I absolutely love it. I also feel the same about the uh, newest mascara from Tarte, and it's their tubing mascara. I started off using a travel size of this. I heard good things about it, so I bought a travel size. I tried it. I loved it. I actually wore this when I gave birth to my fourth baby in September, and it actually didn't budge. It didn't move. I, I was blown away. Not only by the fact that I wore it for a few days, like, yes, I wore mascara for two days straight. It didn't even wash my face. I know, gross. Whatever. It's childbirth and it's, it is what it is. So I wore it during that time and I was just super impressed with it. But not only that, it's the way it makes the lashes look. It's the length, the drama, the separation, the thickness that it gives. It makes my lashes look even longer than they are and I absolutely love it and I feel like this mascara is just one of my absolute favorites 
and I did discover it last year. The Pillow Talk one from Charlotte was one that I discovered the previous year, I believe, but it was one that I used pretty consistently last year. So I'm not gonna include it in this video, but as far as like discovered products from last year, I would have to say it's the Tartlet Tubing Mascara. This stuff is amazing and it is easy to take off with some makeup remover. It comes off in like little specks. And then the one that I'm wearing today is the Limitless Mascara from Ilia. Again, I started off with a small size of this and I really enjoyed it, so I have it in a full size. And I like the fact that this one gives me some separation. It doesn't give me as much thickness as the other two mascaras, but I do like the way it separates. Every single lash is sort of coated with the mascara. The formula on this one is a little bit more wet than the Charlotte Tilbury one, than the Tarte one, but this is, I feel like, any more wet than this, it's just not gonna be for me. Just because I feel like when formulas are pretty wet and kind of glossy, I feel like it makes everything stick together and it doesn't do me any favors. So this one has a very different type of brush. It has a like an hourglass shape to it, but on one side there is more like a comb style, which I think makes this quite unique. And I will show you, I don't know if my camera is gonna focus with this new setup I have here, but there's some like teeth like combing, um, bristles here that you can use to separate. So that's what I do first. Start with that, kind of get a separation going. And then you turn it to that other side where it's more of an hourglass and you kind of comb through. Or you can start with the hourglass side, comb through, and then kind of separate. I do like the comb part for the lower lashes. I do feel like it's very um, easy to apply and it doesn't create any smudges. And I do like the way this wears. And another bonus is that this brand is listed under the Clean at Sephora section. So if that's important to you, this is a great one to try. All right, so eyeliner. I don't have a whole bunch of eyeliners to share. I'm gonna start with my pencil ones, the Makeup by Mario pencil one. This is the Master Pigment Pro pencil in super black. I love this for tight lining, also for regular eyelining. Mine needs to be sharpened. It's really sad I should have prepped it before this video, but I feel like the formula is rich, pigmented, and it's very smooth. It glides on like a gel. But it's also different because this one includes a brush. Not many brands include a brush applicator on the end. If you do get an applicator, it's usually gonna be a smudge tip, but this one is an actual brush. So you can smudge it, create a wing with it. You can use this and get some eyeshadow and kind of smudge over the liner. I actually like this feature. It's a very wispy, kind of soft brush. It's not very dense and stiff, so it's gonna kind of create more of a kind of smoky effect. So I do like that. And the next eyeliner is from Victoria Beckham. This one, I have been wanting to explore more from this brand and I have over the last several months and the Satin Kajal liner is great. I have the shade called Coco. It's creamy, it's rich, it's so easy. It glides on literally like butter. It cannot be easier. And this one comes with a typical smudge tip that you can kind of smudge out and create a smoky look, which I think is essential, especially for using these types of gel very smooth creamy liners to get that thickness to kind of spread it to make it look a little softer without losing the intensity of the color and this one in coco is a great staple color it's a classic kind of chocolate brown my liquid liner for this video is going to be the benefit their real extreme precision liner it's a mouthful you can't miss it if you're looking at the benefit cosmetics products it's a very bright kind of orangey red packaging Looks like a pen. If you have little toddlers like I do, they're gonna be intrigued and be like, mommy, what's that marker? But it's actually a liquid liner. I have it on today with some eyeshadow. I smudge it. This is incredibly pigmented, so I'm gonna warn you when you use it for the first time, it is gonna be incredibly dark and incredibly rich, but it blends out so easily. You have to work quickly with this though because once it sets, it doesn't move. It's got a very fine point, which I feel like is essential for application where you can get a thin, precise line or a thicker line, a cat eye if you like the wing. I don't do wings that often just because I can't ever get them to look right and match, so I just don't even bother with it. But as far as the way this goes on, the way it looks, the intensity of it, it's a yes. I absolutely love it and I use this almost every single day that I do my makeup. I love it and I feel like it's the only liquid liner that I really ever need to repurchase because it's fantastic. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get through them the lip products before my camera battery dies because both of them are just about to die on me so i'm going to try to speed through this 
and I'm gonna start with lip liners. I have a handful to show you. I'm gonna start off with the one that I'm wearing today. It's the Lay Lip Liner from Lancome in the shade called Natural Mauve. This is basically my lips but better kind of shade, and I think it's essential for everyone to have a lip liner that has a very similar tone to your lip color, like your natural lip color, because you can then line and define the actual lip line, which sometimes tends to fade um, over time as we age. Mine has definitely gotten lighter. Also, if you put makeup on as you're blending, you kind of lose that definition. So having one that is more like your lip color is great for defining and bringing that def definition back. I also like the fact that once this starts to wear off, it looks very natural and I don't have to work to make this look better. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that really makes sense, but as lip liners and lip colors fade, depending on the formula and the color, you do need to touch it up throughout the day to kind of keep it going. With this one, I can put it on and as it fades, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to feel like I need to go back and touch it up because it looks weird, it's patchy, it's awkward. It just looks good. It looks like my lip color. And when you have a shade that matches your lips, you can actually sort of cheat and go around your actual lip line and create a more fullness without it being obvious. And that is key to making the lips look fuller. I do it often where I go a little outside, just a hair outside of my actual lip line and it gives me more fullness and I actually like the way that looks. This one also comes with a brush applicator, which is unique as well, to this um, lip pencil and you can kind of go around the edges like this and just kind of soften this out. And I remember when I first tried this one that I'm going to share with you from Buxom, this one also came with a brush tip. And it was sort of like a light bulb moment for me because I never really faded and blended my lip liner. I used to just kind of draw it on and then proceed with the next lip product that I was going to wear for the day. But when I started using the brush to kind of fade and create like a soft feathered look, it literally just changes the whole look of it and it's soft but defined. Really, really great. Um, this one from Buxom, this is a jumbo pen. So these are the plump line lip liner in the shade Incognito, which is more of like a warm tone shade, like a warm nude. And it is one of those typical wooden sharpened pencils. This one from Lancome that I showed you just moments ago, you do have to sharpen it. I do like this formula, but I also really like this one from Buxom as well, the power line. So these are the I don't know if this is like the upgraded version of these thicker wooden pencil ones, but this one is an automatic, you twist it up. This is in the shade called Hush Hush Henna. I use this a lot over the summer. It was my go-to. It's got a triangular shape, which actually looks like the Anastasia Brow pencils. So it has a different shape than anything else that I have in my collection. That teardrop shape I think is pretty handy and useful for defining and kind of getting this on the lip line. And I like the formula. So moving on to the other lip liners, the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. Do I need to say more about this? This is actually a great lip liner. It's a nice kind of pinky nude shade, goes with everything. Honestly, if I only had this one, I could wear this with every single lip color that I like to wear because it is a perfect tone and it's, there's something really great about this. It's, it's why the brand sells this like hotcakes. Like they can't keep it in stock. It's incredible, the formula is great. It's the Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. And then the last one is the Huda Beauty Lip Contour in Muted Pink. I have a few of these. This one in Muted Pink I feel like is a shade that is a little bit deeper, more of like a deeper soft rose shade that gives me a little bit more depth and definition and a little bit more darkness if I go pretty heavy handed with it. But I like the color of it. I like the formula. I recently purchased another one from this brand. Comes with a sharpener on the end which is super handy and I feel like I wish every brand would offer a sharpener for the lip liners. But So now we get to go into lipsticks. So I have a few to share with you. Um, the formula on this one specifically, these are the Charlotte Tilbury formulas. These are the Hot Lips 2, I believe is what they're called, formulation. I'll have them listed below, but the packaging is just stunning on these. Like, look at this. So, so pretty. I love the lipstick formula from Charlotte. These are going to be a little bit kind of glossy. They're not matte, but they're not super glossy and shiny. There is a bit of a sheen to it, but I feel like it's creamy and they're comfortable and easy to wear. This one in Dance for Princess is probably my most used one out of all my Charlotte Silver lipsticks. 
but I just love the packaging and I had to share this with you guys because I do like this formula and this color specifically is the one that I reach for the most, Dancehall Princess, and this one is JK Magic. Um, I do love the formula of those and I do have another one from Charlotte. These are the Hyaluronic Happy Kiss. This was in the shade called Pillow Talk and it's a nice kind of everyday kind of shade and I can kind of put some on just to kind of show you. And this is going to add a little bit more depth to my look and it just instantly transformed the entire lip that I was wearing because I was using another lipstick that was more kind of soft and more everyday. This is everyday but a little touch more on the rose pink side and a little bit more depth than what I was wearing. Still very comfortable, very easy, super glossy, kind of balmy feeling. The color that I was wearing on my lips is from Laura Geller. This is the shade called Berry Vanilla, and these are the Italian Marble Lipsticks, so I will show you because these are just too pretty not to show you an up-close shot of the marbling, as you can see. Different colors kind of swirl together to give an overall like softness to the look, and I feel like this shade specifically, Berry Vanilla, is soft and effortless. This is what I was wearing in one of my videos, um, this lipstick with the Lancome Lay Lip Liner and Natural Mauve. I wear these two pretty often. And that's what I was wearing up until I put this on um, just to show you the color. But you have seen this lip combo plenty of times in lots of my past videos because I just absolutely love these two together. They're perfect. Citizen Cosmetics, I have a few of these. And this is just um, Dubrovnik. This is the only one that I just kind of grabbed. I should have just pulled them all out to show you. But what makes this different is that it is a matte lipstick, but it's a velvet finish. So you have a lipstick on one end. And it is a matte finish, so it's going to be comfortable and easy to wear on its own. But what I like is that they've given you the gloss to match. Now, the gloss is a little bit on the thicker side, but not too thick where it feels goopy and gloppy. It's very pigmented, so you honestly could just use this gloss and nothing else and have actual lip color on your lips. It's not one of those very transparent. It's creamy. It's glossy. It has a high shine, which I love. And I feel like it makes the lips look juicier, more plump, and fuller. It helps fill in the lines. So I do like the formula of these glosses. And I honestly wish they would just sell the gloss separate. Because um, I could definitely purchase all the shades. And these are the Nudiversal Lip Duos. So it's a lipstick and gloss combo. So it's going to be a duo. And it's all the different tones of nudes. So there's going to be warm tones, more pinks. And then you can just choose based off of your skin tone what you feel like is most complimentary to you. And I have a few. My favorite one specifically out of the ones that I own is called DC, which is a very pretty kind of pink shade. And again, you've seen me talk about this before. I've worn this um, formula in several videos. I do think that the velvet finish on this lipstick is pretty unique in my collection just because I don't use a lot of matte lipsticks or liquid lips. I don't like the way they feel. I don't like feeling uncomfortable or having my lips look all shriveled like a raisin. I just don't like the look. I like gloss. I'm a gloss girl. So when I tried these, I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed the matte finish on these velvet lipsticks. I think they're really fantastic. And then for gloss, I have one. It's Tower 28. As you can see, I've used a lot of this. I have used probably about to here. So I have about that much left. I use this all the time. It's an easy gloss to just kind of throw on. It has a little bit of color. This one is the shade called Coconut. And I feel like it's a nice soft pink color. It's not very pigmented. It's going to sort of give you a touch of pink over a lipstick or a lip liner or on your natural lip color. It's just going to enhance that just a little bit. But it's not going to be a full on pigment that you're going to get from these. And I do love the formula. It's thick and creamy and it just is glossy. It makes the lips look super juicy, plump, fills in the fine lines, same thing as the Citizen version of their glosses. And I like how it wears. It actually sticks on the lips for a long time and it wears really great. And I like the thickness and I think that's why it stays on the lips and it doesn't kind of migrate and kind of disappear because there is a bit of thickness and richness to it, but it just, it feels very luxurious and I like the formula. It has a paddle kind of style uh, doe foot applicator that I feel like helps kind of coat the lips. Honestly, whatever you pull out from the tube the first time is enough to do both top and bottom lips. I don't feel like you need to kind of keep going back, which I feel like makes it last even longer. 
and I just, I like the color. I think that coconut is great. This is the CoverGirl Tinted Lip Balm. It has the pink caps. You will see these in Target, which is where I got mine. It's vegan, has hyaluronic acid. I chose the shade Life is Pink. I like pink tone lip products, if you haven't gathered that already. And so I thought a tinted lip balm with a little bit of pink, great. For every day, throw it on with no makeup. Just, that was the idea, right? So. I get this product, I take it out of the packaging when I get home, it looks like this and I'm like, okay, you know, it looks kind of like similar to the Nivea lip balm packaging and then I go and swipe it on and it's a full on lip color. Like this can be very intense in color. It's a beautiful kind of raspberry pink shade and I was not prepared for the level of pigment. So for this, I actually have to just kind of tap and then blend it with my finger because there is just too much pigment Dare I say too much pigment? Like, what? This is more pigment than you would ever expect from a lip balm or a tinted lip balm. This actually looks like I put on a lipstick, at least this specific shade. So this is something I had to share with you because it's comfortable. It's got that um, skincare quality to it with the hyaluronic acid, which helps add moisture and hydration to the lips. I just honestly thought it was going to be a little bit lighter for every day, but this is more pigment than I expected and I thought I was going to get. And I was blown away and I feel like I need to go back and pick up all the shades because I really do want to try them all. I love this stuff. It's really, really good. And I only have one shade and it's Life is Pink. So they have a couple and I think they have a clear as well. So the last product in the lip category is one that I use every single night and it's the Laneige Sleeping Mask. This one here is the Peach Iced Tea flavor. They have different options to choose from. You can get them at Sephora. They have kits during the holidays, sets throughout the year that you can get to try. This stuff is really great. I'm very late on this bandwagon. I really am. I've had this specific one in my collection for quite some time and it wasn't until last year that I really started using this. And now I'm hooked. I use this every night after I take a shower and do my skincare routine. I'll show you. It's pretty thick if you haven't seen this already, which I'm pretty sure you have. You may even already use this product. It's really great. It's rich, it's thick. It says it's a sleep mask or lip sleeping mask and it actually does stay on the lips and I do feel like it helps soften the lips. So when I put this on at night before bed, I wake up in the morning and it's still there. Still the fullness, the thickness layer that it is at night when I put it on, it's still there in the morning. It's still glossy. It's still shiny and I'm like, how? How is this not all over my sheets, on my pillowcase? It sticks to your lips. So I think it's really great and I feel like this little jar will last a long time. You just need a little, little bit to really get that sort of hydration and that softness to the lips. I think this would be a great step as a prep before doing your makeup. Put a little bit of this on as you're doing all your other makeup steps. And so when you get to your lip products, your lips are prepped, softened, and ready to go. Because my lips, they're always dry. They're always just, mm, no. That's one of the things that I need to fix for 2023 is not having lips that are so dry and crusty. And I think this Laneige product is going to help me. We're done. This is it. <laughs> this is the products in the eye category and lip product category that I feel like are just truly incredible products that have just been super big standouts for this past year. Products that I really just love and I am just so excited to share and talk about in videos and use. You have seen these in tutorials. You've seen me wear these products in videos before. I feel like every single product in this video that I included is just something that I would recommend to friends and family. I feel like these products, you can't go wrong. If you try any of them, I think you will love them. I just absolutely love I'm looking at everything spread out here because I have a new setup and I will get to that in a separate video. But all of these products are just, they're just great. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that 2023 has been off to a great start for you. Check out the description box. Everything is going to be listed for you down below. You can follow me on Instagram. It's always going to pop up on the screen. And you can connect with me there. And I'm going to get back into posting on there more regularly. I've taken a break, but I am back. And I would like to kind of get back into filming and get a routine going. And we'll talk about the new setup and I will show you what's going on behind the scenes. I think that would be kind of cool. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll talk to you very soon.